One of our colleagues said that uh, the founders never anticipated that you would have huge numbers of people who couldn't vote or being counted. Of course they did. The vast majority of Americans couldn't vote when the country started. That's not uh, what enslaved, my colleague said. What, 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 but then I, I stand corrected. What did he say? Can, I, I, he said I, the founders never anticipated this volume of illegals. Okay, well, I, I will take on. He didn't say that they don't don't twist my colleague's words. Fair enough uh, that you're very valiant to rise to his defense. I will answer that misnomer on his part. Then, if what he said they never anticipated that number of illegal people, there was no immigration law when the Constitution was adopted at all. In fact, the only illegals in the country at least according to the native population, were the people writing the Constitution. There was no federal that, law at all. Exactly. The member knows this. So, He's being cute. Jamie Raskin is hammery MAGA clown Clay Higgins about a proposed bill that would reform a census question. But what does this bill do? H.R. 7109 would then ensure that only citizens are included in the apportionment base by which representation in Congress is allocated. Non-citizens comprise nearly 7% of the total population of the United States. 7%. But non-citizens are not evenly distributed among the states. And some states end up with greater representation in Congress based on a higher concentration of non-citizens. This dilutes the one person one vote principle for citizens in states with fewer non-citizens. Jim Comer and the Republicans are hiding behind the guise of fairness and representation to exclude non-citizens from any form of representation at the federal level. The Republican logic goes like this. Since non-citizens can't legally vote, they shouldn't count at all towards the census population data that determines how many federal representatives each state is awarded. Now let's get back to Jamie Raskin shooting down this bogus... Republican bill. So for all of you textualists out there, the plain reading of the text of the Constitution is clear. For all of the constitutional originalists out there, the original purposes have been carefully articulated and never rebutted. For all of you members who like to follow precedent, well, every apportionment in the United States since 1990 has included every single person residing in the United States. The addition of a question about citizenship will deter many immigrants, not only undocumented, but persons with green cards and other forms of lawful status from completing the census. Many non-citizen immigrants who are seeking asylum or are refugees will avoid responding because of uncertainty over their status and fear of arbitrary law enforcement action. You know, this fear is not unfounded. The hostility is intentional, which is exactly how the Republicans want anyone who isn't a citizen to feel by introducing this bill. The census has to count every person. The, the problem is the, the level of illegal persons that now live within the, the continental borders of the United States has reached such a point that it thwarts the intended service of our representative republic. Higgins going mask off on the true intentions of this bill after Comer's tactful introduction is perfect representation of today's Republican Party. Not a lot of politics, just straight hate. 45 million illegals, that's 60 congressional seats. And where do you think those illegals are being drawn to live? In sanctuary states and sanctuary cities, densities of population which have advertised and welcomed and brought, and brought these illegal citizens there. Why? Why do you think this has been one of the, the, the core tenets of agenda of the Democrat Party? It's to thwart the very essence of our representative republic by stacking the deck during the, the census, whereby apportionment for congressional representation will be permanently shifted to sanctuary states and cities. This is the game plan, man. It's, it's a decades-long agenda to permanently transform this body. Higgins is just repackaging and sanitizing the white supremacist Great replacement theory here. The apportionment was reflective of, of American citizens living within the United States. 
our representative republic is at risk. Now let's hear Raskin's rebuttal to this gross display. The Supreme Court has been very clear about this, and the founders were very clear. There are lots of people who are not voters who get counted in the census, start with children. Do we think children should not be counted in the census because they're not voters? That makes no sense. Every period of American history, uh, there have been different periods of xenophobia and anti-immigrant fervor towards Germans, towards Irish, towards uh, Mexicans, you name it, okay? So there's nothing unusual about what we're going through where people want to whip up hysteria about the foreign born. And in fact, you can find lots of periods in American history where there was a greater percentage of foreign born people in the country than there are today. And it, in, and it also stimulated the same kinds of uh, political movements that some of our colleagues identify with. This is a nation that was founded by people who were open to immigration. And Tom Paine said America would become an asylum to humanity, not an insane asylum, but a place of refuge for people fleeing from political and religious and economic oppression, seeking greater opportunity. And that's what America is. So what, what they want to say is that non-citizens, I don't know where they are on children and other people who can't vote, but they want to say that non-citizens, including lawful non-citizens, permanent residents, green card holders, should not be counted, which creates, as our colleague was saying, tremendous problems for understanding where the population is and how to serve programmatically the population. Smoke and mirrors. That's a key difference between Higgins's and Raskin's styles. Motivation is another. Higgins and members of his party are motivated by the racism that underlies the bill. They want us to believe that they hold all the cards or rights and can utilize or weaponize them against us as they choose. Raskin's meantime, he doesn't want to break new ground at all. His argument is simple. It's based on past SCOTUS decisions, you know, case law and the Constitution. He throws in a bit of morality for good measure. It does make you wonder, though, if they're even part of the same debate. 